Thank you very much, Mr. Deputy Speaker, for granting me leave to make a brief intervention. I, I will commence my brief discourse this morning, Mr. Deputy Speaker, by indicating that I'm happy we are not here today for another Madipwete to facilitate bogus fly-by-night projects, but for repairs of the school plant associated with the development of our nation's key asset, our human resource. We all know that education leads to a more productive future, both for the individual and for societies. As a matter of fact, if we take our journey through the corridors of time, we'll recognize, Mr. Deputy Speaker, that Russia, together with its wider construct of the USSR, mounted from the status of underdeveloped country to developed country and superpower, mainly on the wings of education. Japan owes its phenomenal growth as an industrial power to education. And we can go through Asia and look at Taiwan and other countries around the world. And only last week, through the Saudi Development Fund, we were able to secure funding for St. Jude's Hospital and, of course, for the stadium. But that's for another show. This is why the Philip J.P. administration makes health and education urgent priorities. And there was a lady called Mary Levins who said, and I quote, students who are not well enough will not learn well enough. So if they are not well enough to learn, they cannot learn well enough. And although, Mr. Speaker, the economy is still recovering, at the last budget we noted that we have not returned to pre-COVID levels. But this is what the manager of this economy has been able to do for education. We brought back the laptop programs, and you heard the Minister for Education indicating that every child that would go to Form 1 would receive a laptop at registration. We and Form 4. We saw the payment of facility fees whilst we're recovering, Mr. Speaker, from COVID. This is commitment to education, commitment to the people of this country, a commitment to utilize the revenues that we are able to raise to fuel the development of the people of the country. We are still in recovery mode. And the manager of the economy, the honorable member for Cast Resist, the honorable Philip J. Pierre, is able to pay math and English for CSEC school bursaries. And to provide relief, Mr. Speaker, for the school children and the staff at our various schools. But not only his competence in the field of economics and finance that I wish to accentuate, Mr. Speaker, I want to, for the record, because I know that the misinformation barons are at work. And of course, we like to maneuver within the parameters of the law. And therefore, Mr. Speaker, I support the resolution brought to this honorable house from the Minister of Finance to approve the transfer of $5,400,000 from the Consolidated Fund to the Contingencies Fund for the purpose of A, supporting the recovery efforts of the Department of Education, Sustainable Development and Innovation Science, Technology, and Vocational Training due to the passage and damage caused by Tropical Storm Brett and B, catering for future emergencies. As the Prime Minister and Minister for Finance alluded to, Mr. Speaker, whilst he was presenting this motion, the Consolidated Fund, the, the Public Finance Management Act Cap 1501 makes provisions for the following funds. The Consolidated Fund, this relevant provisions in the aforementioned Act that provides for payments into and out of the consolidated fund as sections 13 and 14 respectively. The contingencies fund, 
the relevant provisions governing the contingencies fund are sections 15, 16, 17, and 19, respectively. The sinking fund. This fund is governed by sections 20 and 21, respectively. We all recall, Mr. Speaker, the former Prime Minister and Minister for Finance castigating our government for not establishing a sinking fund for debt repayments. But no sooner had he established the sinking fund, Mr. Speaker, he sunk it. <laughs> Mr. Speaker, he, of course, did not understand that our government inherited a massive deficit and it really made no financial sense to borrow funds at 5% to establish a sinking fund on which the government would earn 2 or 3%. So you want to go and borrow at 5%, you have a big loan paying at 5%, but you put it in some account where you are getting 2 or 3%. No sane minister for finance would believe that this is better business. And if you are employed, if any business, they were going to fire you as a result, which is what the public of this country did on the 26th of July, 2021. The Public Management Act establishes a special fund which is governed by sections 22, 23, and 24, and a trust fund which is governed by section 25 of the Public Finance Management Act, Cap 1501. Mr. Speaker, as I indicated earlier, the contingencies fund is governed by sections 15 to 19, and sections 15 provide for establishing the contingencies funds and state. For the purposes of section 81 of the Constitution of St. Lucia, cap 1.01, there is established a contingencies fund. It is clear from the foregoing, Mr. Speaker, that the Constitution of St. Lucia makes provisions for the establishment of a contingencies fund. In fact, section 81 of the Constitution of St. Lucia states as follows. There shall be such provisions as may be made by parliament for the establishment of a contingency fund and for authorizing the minister responsible for finance, if satisfied that there has arisen an urgent and unforeseen need for expenditure for which no other provision exists to make advances from that fund to meet that need. Two, where any advance is made from the contingency fund, a supplementary estimate shall as soon as possible be laid before the House. And when the supplementary estimate has been approved by the House, a supplementary appropriation bill shall be introduced as soon as possible in the House for the purpose of replacing the amount so advanced." Unquote. From the foregoing, Mr. Speaker, the Constitution provides for Parliament to establish a contingency fund to meet urgent and unforeseen expenditures for which no other provisions exist. The approval of Parliament is required, Mr. Speaker, for the establishment of a contingency fund and for authorizing the Minister of Finance to make advances to meet that need, namely, an urgent and unforeseen need for expenditure for which no provision has been made. Section 16, Mr. Speaker, provides for transfers to the contingency funds and states as follows. The minister, who is the minister of finance, may, by an affirmative resolution of parliament, transfer from the consolidated fund a prescribed sum as may be required for the operation of the contingency fund. Hence, this section provides the reason why the Minister of Finance is coming to this honorable house to seek authority by way of an affirmative resolution to transfer funds from the consolidated fund to the contingency fund. Section 17 provides for the administration of the contingency fund. This section provides as follows, Mr. Speaker. One, the Accountant General shall administer the contingency fund. Two, the Minister, after consultation with the Accountant General, may, by order, publish in the Gazette, specify the amount for permanent capital in the contingency fund. Three, 
the Accountant General shall keep the contingencies fund separate from other accounts maintained at a financial institution approved by the Minister and shall a pay into that account all monies appropriated to the contingencies fund by an appropriation act. B, without delay, pay from the contingencies fund all advances made under Section 19. Section 18 provides for the preparation of financial statements in respect of the contingencies fund to be prepared by the Accountant General, which is to be audited by the Director of Audit. The checks and balances, Mr. Speaker, are clearly provided for in Section 18. Finally, Section 19 of the Act provides for advances from the contingency fund. One, the minister may, in the case of an urgent or unforeseen need for expenditure, by a contingency fund warrant and in anticipation of the grant of an appropriation by Parliament authorize an advance from the contingency fund where a, no monies have been appropriated or for which the sum appropriated is insufficient. B, funds cannot be reallocated as provided for under Section 43. And C, public monies cannot be deferred without serious detriment to the public service. Two, the total of the sums authorized under subsection 1 to be advanced from the contingencies fund shall not exceed the total sum authorized under section 17. Three, where an advance is made from the contingencies fund under this section, a supplementary estimate of the sum required for the service for which such advance was made shall be paid laid before Parliament as soon as possible, but in any event not later than four months from the date on which the Contingencies Fund Warrant was issued and shall be included in a supplementary appropriation bill for appropriation. This section, Mr. Speaker, is in keeping with the need for meeting the requirements of the Constitution, which I stated earlier. Mr. Speaker, we are not doing things when convenient. We are maneuvering within the parameters of the law, which is necessary for the maintenance of good governance in this country. Four, on the grant of an appropriation to meet the expenditure in respect of which an advance is made under this section, the contingencies fund warrant authorizing that advance lapses and ceases to have effect and the advance is deemed to have been made for the purpose of the appropriation and shall be accounted for in the prescribed manner. Given the foregoing, Mr. Speaker, this has clearly identified the need for unforeseen expenditure that cannot be met since no monies had been appropriated or for which the sum appropriated is insufficient. Funds cannot be reallocated as provided for under Section 43. C. Public monies cannot be deferred without serious detriment to the public service. And therefore, Mr. Speaker, this is an urgent and unforeseen expenditure which was not provided and therefore I wish to give my full support to this resolution. That one, Parliament authorizes the Minister of Finance to transfer from the Consolidated Fund to the Contingencies Fund the amount of $5,400,000 and of course support the recovery efforts of the Department of Education, Sustainable Development, Innovation, Science, Technology and Vocational Training due to the passage and damage caused by tropical storm breath, and B, cater for future emergencies. Mr. Speaker, I now yield the floor.